Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. Cleaning up from our vacation up to the Sequoias. We just got back from a week's vacation up in the high Sequoias. Wonderful time. I've got about 38 kilos of CR dust to clean off all this stuff. But I got a great video for you guys. We got some four wheeling, we got some mountain biking, we got some camping, we got some family time, we got some awesome sights and beautiful views of the Sierras. And I wanna bring you guys along. So uh, stay tuned. I think you guys are gonna dig this video. It's gonna be a long one because we fit a whole lot of stuff in. So give me a subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment. You know the drill. Let's go to the Sierras. <laughs> truck's really 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 gonna get a get a good stress test here uh, I've got the grapevine coming up which is a pretty significant climb it's a freeway uh, that goes over the Tejon Pass Tejon Pass is only around 4,000 feet but you start at a thousand so you start about a 3,000 foot gain in probably eight miles or something like that so I am letting the truck cool down right now um, it's probably a hundred two out I would guess and uh, I just pulled over on the side of the freeway to let things cool. I'm gonna take a quick peek underneath the truck and see if there's any fluids leaking or anything like that, but it doesn't look like it. We're running good. Temperatures look good. Um, transmission's at 180, engine's at 200, but I expect it to hit a lot hotter than that on the way up. I wouldn't be surprised to see 220 out of both the engine and the transmission uh, which isn't the end of the world but uh, if I can start with it being a little bit cooler then I'm gonna go for it But uh, yeah, loving it, we're getting up there, we're gonna have a blast. It is actually cooler here. I'm not sure what our elevation is, but it is cooled off quite a bit from what it was before we tackled the grapevine. And the truck just monstered the grapevine. Uh, what else? Gas has been doing good, I'm at half a tank. I'm gonna fill up right now. I got 10 gallons in the cans and I got probably another 10, 12 gallons in the tank, but I'm gonna fill up the tank so I've got that full. Uh, we're about an hour, hour and a half away from the campsite. Just picked up some firewood. Um, anything else? I, I don't really think so. The 
truck is fine. The only issue we have had is that uh, my ammo can provides the power for the fridge that is supposed to get recharged off that solar panel. I don't know if it's the solar panel. Well, I don't think it's the solar panel because I'm getting about 12.9 volts out of it when it's in direct sun. But the solar controller in the ammo box is not delivering that voltage amperage. Voltage? Voltage? Current to the battery. So the battery's just dying. So I pulled it all out of the ammo can, bypassed the solar controller, and hooked up the battery directly to my charging system in my truck and ran that through to the inverter and now that's doing the battery. So I'm running the truck for a little bit here to get that uh, deep cycle marine battery as full as I can so that when I leave it'll keep the fridge cool. Uh, the multiple redundancies on the truck are awesome. Having two batteries on the truck means I've been running primarily, actually exclusively, off of the one main battery, the battery that does everything. Everything's attached to it. The starter, all the main accessories, anything is attached to that. But my secondary battery is also charged off the alternator. It's just not used as part of the, the current pool, the available amperage. So I know that I've always got a battery available for jump starting. So if I should kill the drive battery, I just flip a switch and I'm over to the other one. So uh, yeah, let me show you the little kludgy thing I pulled together. Yeah, so there, negative. 13.2 is about what I'm pushing into it. And you can see right now, I'm only drawing less than an amp. Perfect. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna DC this. You guys indulge me for a second here while I brag about my adopted home state of California. Now I am a transplant. I'm a Brit. If you guys didn't know that, I am a limey. I moved here when I was nine to the Bay Area and then moved to the central coast of California about 20 years ago. And I know, I know that California gets a lot of headlines and a lot of them for stupid reasons. But the reality is this state is absolutely mind-blowing. From San Diego to Humboldt, from San Francisco to Mammoth, the variety of terrain, topology, and just awesomeness is on a scale that I've never seen before. Um, I love it. I know we've got crazy laws. I know we have crazy politicians. But the reality is, that's in two cities. That's LA and San Francisco. The rest of the state, it's awesome. It's awesome. And we can still own guns here. We can still build cool trucks like this. We still have trails everywhere. But just take a look around. I'm up in the Sequoia National Forest right now, and there's service roads everywhere. Everywhere. They're all marked on a map, and they're all open for driving and just cruising and checking out. And look at this. Look at this campsite. Are you kidding me? Anyway, I love California. I love this country. But California gets a lot of grief from everyone. People always talk trash about it, but I just think it's because they're jealous because our state is awesome. Anyway, enough of my public service announcement. Let's talk about my truck because I was really, really happy with how things went yesterday. And I know I'm talking about it a lot, but I'll tell you why. When you buy a factory truck, when you buy like a brand new Ford, 
Ford has done all the hard work for you. They figured out what the BTUs, what the what the what the coolant system requirements are, what the what the electrical system requirements are. They've done all that, and then they've torture tested the heck out of them. So you guys don't ever need to worry about your F-150 breaking down when you're going over the grapevine. They have done that for you. Me, on the other hand. I'm torture testing this thing myself. I spec the biggest radiator I could find. I put a really powerful transmission cooler in, but I still didn't know if that was gonna be good enough or if I had done it correctly, or maybe the truck was just gonna run really, 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 really hot and I was gonna be screwed anyway. And I'm happy to say that yesterday, zero leaks, zero overheating, good gas mileage, comfortable ride apart from the hair dryer in my face cruising through Bakersfield and uh, all that mess down there but it's nice up here I'm at around 75 8,000 feet right now and it is just gorgeous just gorgeous building this truck and building it for this purpose where I could pull the trailer get to an epic spot like this or the one we're at drop the trailer and then go four wheeling somewhere and then come back to the trailer that was what I wanted to do when I set out on this build. That was my objective, that's where I was headed, and I'm happy to say I've accomplished it. So uh, yeah, a lot more stuff to see and do up here. Little known secret that may not be such a secret, my number one passion in life is mountain biking. It has been since I was, shoot, 13 years old. I got my first job when I was 13 so I could buy my first mountain bike. And I'm up here and there's some epic, epic trails. I've ridden a bunch of the stuff down south in Kernville, uh, but there's some bitchin' stuff running right through my campsite that I'm hoping I can get a sweet little shuttle ride. If my awesome wife is willing to, uh, to pick me up, I don't need to use my legs. I can just go do a sick technical downhill. She can pick me up and run me back up to the camp, and that would be awesome. So, needless to say, this is a week that was needed. My workstation is pretty sweet. My office has a killer view today. Not bad. One of my other favorite things, and I'm gonna have to whisper here, otherwise they're gonna see, is when my kids just play together without me having to get involved. It's awesome. It's like parenting win. Granted, the youngest is playing with a kitchen knife. I take one of the victories I can get. So this is what I find pretty funny. We brought everything. I mean, I brought tables. I've got, I've got this, this awning right here. I got this awning I'm standing under. Did not pack a stove. Yeah, I didn't pack a stove. So, caveman make fire. <laughs> All this trip prep, and I did not bring a stove. Boiling water. Wouldn't be overlanding if I didn't show you my dinner, right?
I've had a lot of you guys asking about the ammo can solar energy power source. Well, uh, I'm gonna give you a quick run through here. Uh, I do have a video up on it that goes into more detail, but uh, I'm having to jerry rig it a little bit because my solar panel or my solar controller is on the fritz and is not delivering current to the battery. But here it is, this is uh, all it is. Now, the difference being this is a deep cycle marine grade battery. So this is not a starting battery. It doesn't have a uh, high cranking capacity. So it doesn't gonna, it's not gonna start your car effectively for you, but what it does have is a really good deep cycle draw, meaning that you can run it down to pretty much nothing. Uh, and it's not gonna damage it like it would a uh, regular cold cranking amp starting battery. So this is a 100 amp hour battery, meaning that if I have a draw that's one amp hour, this battery's gonna last for 100 hours. Now, the ARB fridge, the ARB fridge is technically about four amp hours um, when it's running. Anywhere between four and six is what I see. But when it's not running, when it's just maintaining and the temperature is already set where it needs to be, it gets down to about an amp hour. Um, so that's why this works well for that. This is the solar controller. This is where the panel plugs in. This is what delivers to the battery. And then I've got another alternative current that I could put to some lights that I've got. This runs through down to the battery. And then from the battery, I come to this 100 amp hour, sorry, 100 amp breaker. This is a resettable breaker. So if it does get tripped, I can flip it really quickly. I've got this battery switch. This is the master power switch that when I turn it on, it delivers power to my inverter. And then I've got this watt meter that's gonna give me uh, watt hours, amp hours, voltage, all kinds of stuff. So I can read a lot of things off of this. And then I've got my inverter. This is a thousand watt inverter which is probably overkill for what I'm using, but you know, it was what I thought I'd future-proof with. Now, this is a pure sine wave inverter. The big difference between a pure sine wave inverter and a regular inverter is gonna be the way the electricity is delivered. You do not want peaky, bursty, uh, blocky, sharp uh, deliverance of uh, current because that can harm certain electronics. So a pure sine wave inverter gives you a very nice sine curve for uh, electricity delivery and uh, it's the way to go they're quite a bit more money but uh, you don't want to be plugging your laptop into a regular one you're gonna you're gonna really stress it so this is AC right here this is an inverter that converts everything to AC I can also run DC directly off of this but uh, yeah that's it in a nutshell I made it so it fit in my ammo can uh, I will put all these parts up on my Amazon store. They're currently up there right now, but they're scattered throughout the store. I need to do some housekeeping on the store. But this thing is great. Um, what I'm having to do right now is just charge it off the car. You can see the car is putting out 13 volts. So this guy's gonna be probably at 50% capacity in I would say maybe 10, 20 minutes, maybe even more. We'll be able to see when I turn it off and uh, I'll run you through it then. But it's great. It runs the refrigerator, it can charge cell phones, cameras, laptops, lights, all the stuff that you shouldn't be taking camping with you anyway. So, hope that helps. If you guys have more questions, like I said, I have a video that d dives deep into volts, amps, watts, how they all relate, AC versus DC, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is electrical, obviously, duh. So be careful. I have multiple fuses in this, and I'm always aware that when I'm working with it, I do have some significant current that could uh, do some damage to me if I'm not careful. There's my uh, little safety spiel. Okay, so today is <clears throat> hot, but it is summer. And we are hiking to try and find some natural water slides that are around here. And uh, yeah, we've dropped down the eastern side of the Sierras. <clears throat> uh, we're on our way to, I'm not gonna say where we are. That does bring up a good point. I know lots of people are gonna hit me up on the channel as to where is this? Well, I, I don't like to say on my videos where we are exactly because a lot of people see these videos and these places are special because they do not get overcrowded. It's not gonna be difficult to find where we are, but I am gonna leave it up to you guys to do a little uh, detective work. So, uh... A metal detector. 
it's uh, available for everyone to enjoy with a minimal of crowds. The word we received was that there's some cool slides that we're gonna go find. Uh, there is creek next to us, so if all else fails, we can jump down and dunk ourselves in that creek. Um, and we picked the perfect time, one o'clock in the afternoon to start hiking. Genius, huh? But that's okay, it's like our own mini Sufferfest. What do you think, dude? Yeah. You digging it? Really? Are you hot? Yes. We got plenty of food and water. Woo! Uh, whatever, we're outside, my cell phone doesn't work, and I'm in the forest with my family. If you've been watching the news at all, you will see that California has been getting ravaged by forest fires. It's uh, pretty bad, and we were very blessed to find a place that was not completely smoked out. We had some initial plans to go to some other areas, and those fell through. This was a last-minute choice that came about from a suggestion from a friend, and we couldn't be happier. It was a great time, good experience relaxing, having adventures, quality time with the family, all around just a great, great place. I thank you guys for uh, coming on this trip with me and enjoying the raw beauty that this world and this country has to offer. We are truly blessed. I hope you guys uh, find motivation in this video to go make adventures of your own. You don't need all this fancy equipment. Just a will for adventure and the motivation to get off the couch. So, go find yours, Eric's Garage. <laughs>